First of all, you need to be well aware of the fact that with IPv6 EIGRP, we are forming neighbor adjacencies with the link local address. It's that address that starts with FE80 in IPv6. There was no link local addresses with IPv4. We'll also see this link local address appear in the routing table as the next top IP address. We'll see it in the topology table as the next top IP address. We'll even see it in the neighbor table because it'll show you in the neighbor table that you form the neighbor adjacency with a neighbor at that specific link local address. IPv6 does not support automatic summarization. Now that's a great thing. Because with automatic summarization with IPv4, if there was any discontiguous networks, we could experience routing issues, black holes, traffic not being forwarded in the proper direction it needs to be. But the concept of automatic summarization is not even possible with IPv6. And the reason why is because there's no classes for IPv6. With IPv4, we had class A, class B, class C addresses. With IPv6, there are no classes. And automatic summarization was all about automatically summarizing addresses at the major classful network boundaries. Well, that doesn't happen in this case. So no automatic summarization even possible with EIGRP for IPv6. Everything is related to IPv6 in EIGRP for IPv6. So we are routing IPv6 traffic. Our EIGRP messages are IPv6 based. We also have authentication, but with IPv4, it was EIGRP specific, where now we are relying on the authentication support that's built into IPv6 itself. The multicast address with IPv4 was 224.0010. It's FF02 double colon A for IPv6 EIGRP. So the FF02 is a reserved uh, multicast address for uh, link-specific multicasting. So this multicast that's sent out with an FF02 is not going to be routed. It's not going to go beyond the link or the subnet that it's been sent out on. Likewise, when we sent a hello packet with EIGRP for IPv4 using 224.0010, we formed a neighborship with a router that was on the same subnet as ourselves. So it wasn't routed beyond the next router. Well, the great thing about these last digits here is that theoretically they're the same. Now, I know 10 doesn't look like A, but A is hexadecimal. And if you take that hexadecimal number and you convert it to decimal, it is 10. So they preserve this relationship between the two, which is really, really nice. So it's relatively simple to remember. If you know 224.0010 is for IPv4, then you'll know if you have to pick out the multicast address in a lineup of multicast addresses for I EIGRP for IPv6, just look for the one that says A, FF02 double colon A, and you've got the right one. We're still using the exact same protocol type using 88. So that hasn't changed. It's still EIGRP. We've just enhanced EIGRP to support IPv6. Bandwidth, delay, reliability, load, all those interface parameters are the same. They don't change. Just because we're using IPv6 doesn't mean bandwidth changes or delay changes. So those interface values are still used when computing the metric. So therefore, the metric calculation is still the exact same. And it boils down to what? Bandwidth plus delay times 256, where the lowest bandwidth is used and the cumulative delay is utilized. The concept of successor, the best path, and the feasible successors, the alternate paths that are available if the successor goes away, that concept still exists. And the rules for becoming a feasible successor haven't changed. Your reported distance must be less than the feasible distance of the successor to be a feasible successor. And then when it comes down to the router ID, we're still using an IPv4 address. So 
if you have interfaces with IPv4 addresses on them, when you turn on EIGRP for IPv6 on your router, it will pick one of those IPv4 addresses to be the router ID. Specifically, it looks at loopback interfaces first. Which loopback interface has the highest IP address? That's the IP address that it used. If there's no loopback interfaces, then it looks at the physical interfaces that are up and running. Doesn't have to, it doesn't even have to be an interface participating in EIGRP. It just has to be an interface that is up, up. And it finds the one with the highest IP address, and it'll use that one. If you don't have any interfaces with IP addresses on them, or, pardon me, IPv4 addresses on them, then EIGRP for IPv6 is going to require you to use the router ID command in order to configure one manually. 